All right. Let's boot up another one. Next up, we're gonna do another box by Lucian, who's a follower of the stream. We're gonna do Sunset Decoy. Boot it up, it's already imported. Booting up. All right, it is up. Let's scan it and see if we can find it on our network. We're attacking 227 this time. Jaunt 227? What? You can't even use the same power twice. Is Jaunt bound to the two key for you? Oh wait, no, I was <laughs> Oops, I was thinking about City of Heroes. Alright, so another box where we've got 22 and 80 open. How are scrims going tonight, Barrier? I saw Vori was yeah. It's a misfits night. Which I much prefer. Also, there's something called save.zip. Oh yeah, it's not 9 o'clock yet. So we will save this file and take a look at it. Yeah, I only have the Fire Nature, so I can only play one hero when we run that lineup right now. Alright. Let's take a look at whatever this zip file is. All right, well, there's a password. So... Oh, did you? That's good, what was it? Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, Dur Search is awesome. Uh, I used to use Derby, but Dur Search is a great tool. Um, we need Zip to John. We actually have John installed by default, I think, though. I think we just need the zip to John. No, we do not. Awesome. All right, we'll just install the whole thing. Yeah, even non-hacking stuff, you can find really cool stuff. Just brute forcing directories and files. 
Um, even like if you're playing a game, I've found like game leaks that they haven't quite yet posted and stuff. Also, I need to restart the camera, it looks like. No, it's actually the stream that lags. All right. Hopefully we can just make this without any issues. Headers being installed. Oh my goodness, why? I may be able to install it from apt, actually. Also, I'm not rude. Let's just... Let's see if we can install it from... Okay. Let's install it from here instead of source. We do have the zip to John tool though. What? Uh, do we need to be root? Yep. Okay, and we do have zip to John. That's my bad. I'm so used to having the root user. So... We've got our password hash now. Let's grab this. Hopefully it can crack it quickly. Manuel, awesome, that was nice and easy. Thank you for not having a ridiculous password. All right, we have got it open. It looks like it's a bunch of configuration files for Linux box. Um, also, while I'm here, let me do something else. download that file. Okay. So we unzipped it. We're probably going to have to just crack a password. Um, nothing interesting in the root. Other than maybe whatever this, this is. Hostname is also some sort of hash. Um, let's Google for these hashes, see if we find anything interesting in case there is some sort of MD5 hash. Uh, nope, these are walkthroughs. We don't want to look at this. All right, we're not going to look at these yet. Sudoers, uh, nothing interesting. Another one of these. So we've got this username. And it's also a restricted bash. So we are going to need to escape that once we get access as this user. So I'm guessing the last line of the shadow file is going to be a password. Yep. Um. Let's see if Roots Password is in there too. Yeah, it is. All right, we're gonna grab this whole thing. And then we're gonna crash our Cali box briefly.
sure would like it to uncrash. Well, that's uh, that's different. Hey, welcome back, Blue. I'm gonna take this as a, as a win. All right, well, I unbroke it at least. Can I please have control of my? I may just need to restart it. I may have just crashed entirely. Yep, I'll just restart real quick. I don't manage to break a fourth Cali instance. So let's get back to our tabs. So we're probably gonna have to crack these passwords in the shadow file. So we'll grab root in case it's easy, and we'll grab the other one as well. Hopefully they are easy as well. Okay, looks like it cracked the first one. So while that runs, let's try it. Um, oh god, we gotta copy this username. So this at 226? 227. And the password was server, S-E-R-V-E-R. -E -E awesome, so we are in already. Good start. That is a terrible username. I wonder what it what it's a hash of. All right, honey pot. What? I don't like the sound of that. Oh god, this username makes everything so hard to read. Well, let's grab the user dot text flex. Oh, we can't. Ah, oh, right, we're in a restricted bash. Um, I feel like we escaped our bash before. This exact our bash. How did we do it last time? We just did this. So let's try. Oh, uh, well, I mean. Maybe we can't auto complete cat? Oh. Uh. Okay, it's there. Awesome. So we got that flag. Good thing we done this before and I didn't have to Google for it. So all we did was restrict, escape a restricted bash environment by using the dash no profile for bash. So it allowed us to run the cat command instead of being restricted to our commands. And cats just 
not in our path, so we should have to do this. So. All right. So what's in the honeypot decoy? Oh, I wanted the. Oh, we don't own that. Who owns honeypot decoy? Root owns that, that's interesting. So the binary itself, it's not sewage root at least. Let's just see what it does. We can run it. Okay. Welcome to the Honeypot Administration Manager. Please select an option. What's our date? Okay, cool. So it's some sort of admin for the Honeypot. Um, calendar? Okay. Can we shut the box down? No, okay. I was going to say, that'd be cool. Not useful, but... Um, what does the AV scan do? The AV scan... Okay, so that's interesting. I don't know what it does, but... Actually runs an AV scan, and if we have to hijack the AV scan or something, I don't see anything interesting. All right, let's uh, let's go back to that tool. Uh, check Etsy password. We already know it's in there. We got that file. Uh, we can leave a note. Marco. So we made this file. We can read it though. Um, what does that decode to? Random. And then a random string. Okay, just gives it a random file name. At least semi random. And then check the service status. Well, that's interesting. I wonder what that does. Because that looks like it's trying to run service base name. It looks like it might be trying to run binaries that don't exist. So we could hijack it, maybe. an ID. I just redirects to bin ID. Oh my god, this username is killing me. It's so long. There is a log file though. Okay, so there's some sort of Python process monitoring. Uh, looks like they s they used a Python shell. They ran a local PHP server, which we already hit to download the file. Did 
They ran SciPy. They installed check rootkit, so it looks like they're looking for rootkits on the box. Um, can we run the command? Oh, nothing's in our path, right. Um, is it in here? Be nice if it's just an user bin like everything else. See it. Where's that version number? Maybe that's a vulnerable version? Or maybe that's what it means when it runs the antivirus thing. So when we do the, um,. Let's see if it runs that. My very... Okay, it does. Aha! So when we run an antivirus scan, it does this. And it's in root. Okay. So is there a vulnerability in this? Maybe. So if temp is not mounted, no exec. So temp. No, that's wrong. Where's slash temp? Temp isn't mounted by itself, so temp might be exec. Okay, so it looks like it grabs a file called update from temp and then does stuff to it. Because it thinks it's the slapper worm. Okay, because it tries to execute the slapper worm Put an executable file named update with non-root owner and temp. Run check rootkit. Okay. Um, so, I guess we have to get a reverse shell. Um, do we have netcat? Oh, we do. Okay. Um, so let's go to temp. And let's go to user bin netcat. And then we'll grab our IP address. Hopefully it has dash E, we'll just try it. So netcat, let's just try it first. User bin netcat, uh, our IP address. Um, 4444, and we'll try slash E, which will just execute bin sh. So let's see if that worked. It did, cool. So we should be able to use that command and update, and if it executes as root, we should get a reverse shell as root. Did I get that IP address? No, 227. I'm gonna open up another tab as well. What? Server. All right. Oh, that's annoying. Okay. Whatever, we don't need a second one. Um, so, what do we need? We need to listen again. Let me just grab this for the output. Then we got a reverse shell here and it worked. 
So now if we just echo that and put it in temp update, now the update file, and let's make it executable. Oh my goodness. Okay, now it's executable. Now if we go to our home directory, this is still listening. Oh, never mind, it automatically ran it. Uh, we don't even have to execute the antivirus, we're root. Okay, so it's automatically running that antivirus scan anyway. I guess that's not necessary. So we are root. So we don't have a bash history. We have the check root kit we expected. Um, Log.txt is what we found. Okay, so it is, yeah, it is executing check root kit. That makes sense. So it may have just been running anyway, automatically. But yeah, we got our root flag, awesome. So yeah, managed to get two boxes fairly quickly. have the shadow file we don't really need this so yeah that is it for this box uh pretty straightforward we downloaded a zip file from the web root we used zip to john to get the password hash for the zip file we cracked the password for the zip file which was manual we looked at all of the files in the zip file including the shadow file we used the hash from the shadow file we cracked that using john got a password for a user um which was server we logged in, we quickly bypassed our R bash with a trick we learned a couple boxes ago, Funbox. Then we took a look at the Honeypot service, which looked to be running an AV scan. We found a vulnerability in check rootkit 4.9. We put a malicious update in the temp directory, and then we executed our antivirus scan and, ex and got a reverse shell as root. So that is it for this box. Awesome.